with head coach of the Syracuse Crunch, Rob Zettler. Rob, it's been a while. How are you? How's your summer been? Good. It hasn't been that while. Not that long. Man, it doesn't seem like that long, Dan. Uh, it's been good. Been a busy summer. Last couple weeks have been good with the family, but we're ready to rock and roll and get it going. And you're right. It's been a very short summer. It's going to be the shortest off scene in Syracuse Crunch history, and that means you had a very good first year here in Syracuse, and you finished out the season as the head coach. Now you step in to the beginning of the season as a head coach. So what feels different now? Um, just the preparation, um, you know, we had to hire two more, two other guys to replace the people that have left. And, uh, so that was a lot, um, just making sure we get the right people in place. Um, and then, you know, moving forward, how to run training camp, you know, you're not offering suggestions anymore. Now you have to make decisions as the head guy. So it's been good. It's been, um, I've really enjoyed that part of it. Had a lot of conversations with a lot of players over the summer. Um, just making sure they're heading in the right direction as far as their fitness level and their commitment level. And um, so those things, you kind of everything kind of weighs on your mind, you know, the scheduling, the um, what to do in practice coming up, our St. John trip, and then, you know, moving forward, how to, you know, what to do the first couple weeks of the season, all the stuff goes through your head. Right, so you, you got a lot on your plate, clearly. Yeah. So let's take it a couple of things at a time here. First, you mentioned the new coaching staff. Tell us about them, Trent Cole, David Alexander. Fans in Syracuse know Trent a little yeah. bit, but how did you find those guys, and why are they a good fit here? Um, well, it was interesting with Trent because, um, you know, his name just kept popping up, and, you know, I did a lot of uh, searching around and a lot of asking questions to a lot of people that I respected, not only at the NHL level, but at the NHL level and at the junior level. And um, often his name kept coming up. He did a fantastic job in Sudbury as the head coach there for the last three years with uh, probably a team that um, wouldn't have done as well without him. Um, they no, weren't considered a very talented team, but he took them over and above what they should have been doing, which is always a good sign as a coach. And uh, he has history here, as you know, as a player, as a coach. And then David Alexander came highly recommended from uh, the head coach of Maine, Tim Whitehead. I spoke with him and um, couldn't say enough good things about him. And then, of course, you know, you check your references and check the history. And, and he's got a great track record of work ethic and, and developing goalies. So um, we found what I think are two very qualified, very good people. And I think the players will really enjoy being around them. I'll enjoy being around them. We'll have some fun, but um, we'll have a lot of good people working for us as well. And we know that that is such a huge key for this organization to have people that are yeah. good to be around. And that's something that, that you've had an opportunity to, to learn over the last year being with this organization. Aside from hiring the coaches, what other interaction have you had with Steve Eiserman, Julian Brisebois, John Cooper, and the rest of the organization from the draft right on through these stages before training camp? Well, the, the first part of the summer kind of centered on development camp. We had uh, seven days with a lot of our young guys. Um, in down in Tampa and just went through, you know, some practices and some off ice sessions just to give them a little bit of an idea of what Tampa is all about and what to expect in training camp, what to expect and what we expect of them both on and off the ice. So that was good. And then the latter part of the summer, we're, you know, now focused on rookie camp, which opens up next week and it'll give us a chance to see, you know, the Jonathan Druins, the Kucherovs and those guys work together that are, those guys are obviously very highly touted prospects coming into Tampa and um, we'll get a little look at them. So that's kind of been the focus the last couple of weeks, making sure the scheduling and lineups are all in place for that. As you kind of go through this summer as a head coach for the first time, what are you learning? What have been some of the challenges in the weeks leading up to your first full season as head coach? Well, I can think I look back on, you know, I worked with Ron Wilson for a number of years, who's a great mentor, then worked with John Cooper last year, who was also great, you know, learned different things from both of those guys. But just trying to, you know, take little things that I grabbed from them. Like Ron was so, so well organized as far as training camp went, like what the scheduling was and what he wanted everybody to do on a daily basis. And, and John, I learned a lot about relationships from and making sure I keep in contact with a number of people. So those are the things that I've taken from those guys and trying to enforce and, and do. And then of course, adding a few of my own ideas on then what to, what to do in training camp as far as scheduling, what to do on the ice, what to do off the ice. And, um, you know, one of the things I learned from John last year is about relationships and team building and just trying to put in place early on this year some of the things we're going to do not only on the ice but off the ice. And I wonder if it might be a bit easier for you, given that you had the opportunity to be the head coach, not only for the second portion of the season, 
but you started out the playoffs 11-1 and one last year. Yeah. You had a lot of great experience as a head coach. I, I suspect it would be more comfortable coming in with that experience rather than starting a season without any head coaching experience. I think it was it was really beneficial. Um, you know, when I first took the job, I don't think we won a game for the first, first five, so then you start to question yourself a little bit. But, um, you know, I'll give the guys a lot of credit. We had a really strong dressing room, and, we, you know, I think you hear a lot of coaches say stay with the process, and we just stuck with the process. And I knew the guys were playing well, well enough to win. It just wasn't kind of going our way. And then we started to roll a little bit. And uh, we stuck with what we knew was good for our team with what we were doing on the ice and off the ice. And I think the biggest thing is the, the culture we built in the dressing room was huge. You know, the Angelitas, the Cotes, the Terraminas, they were big parts of that for us. And that's probably one of the biggest parts of my job moving forward to make sure the culture stays the same and we get the new guys that are coming in part of it and get them involved early.